So it's been years. Um, I've wanted to have a ham repeater in this area. And I got one a few years ago and set it up temporarily. And I think in the other video I mentioned, it's just basically thrown together and the antenna was thrown up on a roof. It worked, did pretty good. And finally got the okay and the go ahead to put it on a tower here in town. So today we got that done. Ground elevation from the old site to the new site gained 130 feet plus tower height. So that's only moving it about a mile and a half line of sight from where it was to where it is now. So that's quite a uh, improvement. Had the opportunity to try it out a little bit today um, in a couple places where it didn't really work great before. And now it's got pretty good strong signal, full signal on my radio. And I was able to carry on a conversation. And uh, going north, it's working really good now. Used to get about six miles going north, then it would drop off. Now we're pushing on 18 miles with full signal. And uh, we put the antenna on the north side of the tower so that it's favoring the north because I don't really care about favoring the ocean. <laughs> so, at a station up there, he uh, had his radio on scan, heading in this direction, and heard a couple of us talk, and he jumped in and said, oh yeah, it's full scale up here, and we heard him coming through it crystal clear that far away. And I know exactly where he was at, and it didn't even reach that far before you couldn't even hear it. So, drastic improvement. So, uh, took some video, took some pictures, and uh, come on along, see what it's like. Check out the system, and yeah, kind of cheated a little bit moving it. Uh, insurance companies didn't want to cooperate with me, so I... Uh, Got a guy I know with a big bucket truck, and we used that. So it's pretty quick and pretty easy. Move the antenna, well, put a new antenna up, I should say. Put the transmission line up, then I went down to the old site, picked up the repeater and the duplexer and the system, and moved it up, hooked it all up, put it on the air. So come check it out. All right, so I had a few minutes. So I wanted to make sure everything was looking good through the system. So I mounted the antenna just to a pole here at ground level. There it is. Just loosely threaded in the elements. I didn't back uh, jam up the jam nuts on it. Just threaded it in loose. Good enough. So I just hung it there. You saw in the other video in the shop that up inside of here, this jumper is all connected and sealed up. And the jumper comes down and connects to this hard line. You can't run the hard line directly up in the antenna. Number one, it's not gonna fit, because this is too big. And number two, you wanna have a little bit of flexibility there. So seven eighths hard line, stall coiled up on the ground here still good enough i just wanted to be able to see what everything looked like through all this to make sure it was good and this is a dual band antenna so pretty close to the repeater frequency we've got a 1.5 swr and that is pretty good So I know that when this antenna goes on the tower, that uh, everything was good here. So if we go and put it up and I check it again through the system and the SWR is through the roof, we've screwed something up somewhere and we have to figure it out. So I'm going to take a look at it on the UHF side. 
The other reason you want a flexible jumper is if you have to change the antenna out and that hard line is somehow running all the way up into there. You have to tear all this apart on the tower to get it all disconnected. And uh, whereas having the jumper, you can break it apart right here. Switch out an antenna. It's pretty quick and easy. Okay, so I got rid of the hard line. Uh, I'm not going to look at the UHF side through the hard line. I already know the hard line is good. And I don't have the right connector to do it on UHF because notice the difference. On HF and VHF, they put on an SO239 connector, and on UHF, they put on an N connector. I don't know why they just couldn't put N on both sides to make it simple, but they didn't. But I can connect directly to the jumper on the UHF side. Screw it on there. There we go. Now the reason I got a dual band antenna is so if down the road I can pull off putting a UHF repeater up on this site, I've already got the antenna and the transmission line to do it. You know, it's looking pretty good. Right, there we go, 1.4 at 446, the upper end of it. Pretty good at 445-ish, 446-ish. Yeah, we're going up there, 42. Getting higher as we go lower. Uh, I could mess with it and tune the antenna. I could tear it back apart and uh, shorten up the element inside if I wanted to, but that's okay. So I just know that when I put a repeater on the air, I want to stay in the upper end of the band. And I'll have a good SWR on that too. Around here, it's not hard to get two meter frequency pair and it's definitely not hard to get a UHF repeater pair. So uh, there we go. Tomorrow is the day. We're planning on being on site at about eight in the morning and throw this thing up on the tower, get it hooked up. And we'll look at the system again using this. Once it's all mounted, make sure nothing's changed, make sure everything's good to go, then hook up the repeater. Talk about the easy way to throw something on the side of a tower. Got him heading up with the side bracket right now. I'm gonna be around 50 feet. All right, well, he's up there mounting the bracket for me. I'm uh, uncoiling the transmission line. The ends are taped up because you don't want to get gravel, water, nothing like that in your connectors. So I've got it uncoiled here on the ground. This is the tower end, which I also taped just to make sure I didn't get any crap in it. So when you're uncoiling this stuff, this Heliax, you want to make 100% sure you don't accidentally kink it. Because if you do, it's screwed. It's shot. You can't try and straighten it back out and use it. So as you're moving around on the ground, whatever, keep an eye on it. Make sure it doesn't loop itself back over and start developing a kink. As it's going up the tower, make sure you're not going to get a kink. So here we are, we are ready to connect it. The elements are on, we can connect it together here. I'm just gonna send it up to him all in one piece. He's not a radio guy, he's a tree guy. <laughs> Worked with him before. So I'm gonna do all this here so he doesn't have to try and figure out how to seal it up. Okay, it is all connected, snug down. Now I just need to seal it all up, to keep it weatherproof. The cool thing about this site, we've got a backup generator. Okay, it's all sealed up. I've got butyl rubber running from all the way from here all the way up to there. It's all good and sealed. And I get a layer of electrical tape going counterclockwise and another one coming clockwise. Zip tie on the bottom, zip tie on the top so that it can't start trying to unravel itself. 
Probably didn't need one on the bottom, but I did it anyway. So, we should not have any problem with moisture getting into that connection. This here is heat shrink that uh, was put on by the company that put the connector on for me. So, I don't need to bother sealing that up. That's already sealed right to that jacket. He's having to get that around other cables on the tower. So, it's taking a little while. At least he has a nice bucket to stand in. <laughs> it's a lot of fun being up there by yourself, having to do all that, hanging on a tower. He's getting there. He's almost done. And we'll send up the antenna. Yeah, we got the antenna hanging up there on the rope upside down at the moment. Got the uh, center stabilizer attached with a zip tie. He's not a radio guy, so I did all the work on the ground. So all he's gonna do is just clamp everything together up there. But he's an expert tree guy. He's getting to a, he'll be done here pretty quick. All right, he's clamping it to the pipe right now. Nothing is secured yet, really. And uh, just looking at it, make sure everything still looks good. It does. So, let him get everything secured up and we will check her again. Did a uh, band sweep of it. That's what we're looking like. And that's with him uh, right at the base of the antenna at the moment. So on repeater frequency, close to it anyway, it's at 1.4. So that's pretty good. So we are looking good. We're a little higher right now because we're at the upper end. Actually, we're out of the band now. So he's up there at the moment, securing the main transmission line to the tower and working his way down. Awesome, the antenna is up. It's that lower one on the left. So the people that own the site told me that I could go around the 50 foot mark anytime I wanted. There's a bunch of crap up there around 90 that's not doing anything. A bunch of microwave crap, some UHF crap. And they said that when all that mess is off the tower, I can go up higher if I want. But they have no idea when it's gonna get cleaned off. So for now, we're at 50. We're on some good uh, height here on a hill. So I only needed about 55, 60 feet of the Heliax to get into the building, but I bought 80 just on the premonition that maybe in the years to come, I can jump up higher. So I've got plenty of extra to do that. Here's the repeater where it's been living the last three and a half years, temporarily run with an extension cord and Backup battery sitting on a table. There's the cans. LMR 400 thrown on the floor. So it's moving today. Get her up on the hill. Alrighty, it is on the air. Up and running. So even though the building has a generator, they didn't tell me I couldn't put batteries in here, so I did. I'm going to cover those over with some wood, just so nobody drops anything on them. So there's the backup batteries. There's the repeater. There's the cans, the duplexer. Polyphaser for lightning protection, 
Um, this building doesn't really have much in it for a wide copper strapping going to ground. So this is all soldered together. Solid copper wire. Nice wide gradual bend goes down. This mess is not mine. Goes down, goes out to ground rod. Have a copper strap down there, but I don't even think it's grounded. I can't see where it's connected to anything outside. And here's the transmission line coming in. Got a nice curvature to it. Coming down, connecting right there. She's up and running. So now I just need to re-coordinate it for the new location, new antenna height and everything with uh, Nesmic. And uh, it's pretty cool. I've been waiting a long time to get this thing up here. These other cables in behind here. Um, this stuff here, this isn't mine. This goes with this cabinet over here. So basically what we get going on is there's the repeater. Got a receiver side and a transmitter side. So the way it happens is your signal comes in, comes down through here, then here we have a splitter. It's going to come through this side. So it's going to receive through this side, come down and out through here, down that cable, into the receiver. It's going to go through here, do its thing, come back out on a different frequency, and I'm going to change my cables. It's going to come up through this cable, come around, go out through these two cans, and out through this side. And out at the same time. All this has happened simultaneously. So, this duplexer, these cavities, they're called, that's what these do. These allow one antenna to transmit and receive at the same time. If I didn't have these, I would need to have two antennas up on the tower, vertically separated. I'd have to have two lines running in. So that's the whole function of these babies right here. So now it's time to try it out while I'm out around the area, see how it works for other people. Eh, I'm glad that's not mine. <laughs> but it's definitely going to be better than it was. Gained a lot of ground elevation. Plus the antenna height on the tower. There's the line going in the wall. I don't have one of them nice fancy plates. But that'll work. Silicone works.